I'm Mark Gilbert here. Thanks for clicking in. For the next few minutes, we're going to be talking about ways to be yourself. Sounds great, huh? In any case, this video, like all our videos, are about giving you tools and ideas to assist on our spiritual evolution. If this is beneficial to you, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button. It really lets YouTube know you're enjoying the videos that we're making. So in this video, I want to give you some practical ideas that you can use in your life right now in order to be yourself. We're not going to be talking about what it means to be yourself so much in this video, except for just a couple of notes right here. Uh, I've got another video that I did recently uh, that's listed on the screen right now where I was confessing some of the limitations that I had on really living my life fully. And uh, I would encourage you to check that video out. I also wrote a book called Be Yourself. And the last half of the book is all about finding your life purpose and passion. And so it's a good uh, resource as well. But what I would stress just for context setting in this particular video is that when I'm talking about being yourself, I'm talking about following your heart, listening to your intuition, Knowing there is something within you that is calling you to live your life in a certain way and be a certain person, that there is a certain purpose or passion to who you are in this human expression that you're called to be. And being yourself is living that fully by stepping through the fears that you might be feeling about what others might think or do or say about you if you're really claiming that. So. That's what being yourself is. But what I want to do is get to the practical skills that will allow you to be yourself right now. Okay, the first way I'm suggesting for you to be yourself is to more fully listen to your intuition to know what your heart is calling you to do. Now, that might ask the question, how do you listen more to your intuition? Well, the first thing that you would do, and this is like on anything that you want to build into your life, is you set the intention. You create in your consciousness an intention that you wish to be able to be more intuitive and listen to your intuition. And then you set about affirmations, affirmative prayer, and other techniques to shift your thinking so that you're thinking and seeing more uh, intuition listening in your life. But here's a few practical things I'll just list for you. One is uh, you can journal. That gets in, uh, your mind out of the way and uh, moves you into a place of listening. Journal. Meditate. Explore listening to your dreams and writing them down when you get up in the morning. Uh, be an observer of life. As you're walking around in life, don't necessarily react to everything, but observe things and just notice what is the, the greater meaning, what's going on around me, and your intuition will help you, guide you on that. Um, you know, be in tune with your emotions. A lot of times we like to bury our emotions, but I would suggest the more that you can be, be mindful. And that's not necessarily to react based on your emotions, but to be in tune with your body so that you feel what your emotions in your body are telling you in any particular moment. Uh, also, notice your bodily reactions. If there's some sense of your body being flush or you're feeling some sort of pains in your stomach or whatever, listen to your body because that will guide your intuition as well. That's your intuition talking to you. Uh, find a creative outlet. The more that we are creative, the more our intuitive flow gets in, in the flow. Uh, go out into nature. Get away from the busyness of, of material, physical life and get into nature. Uh, ask and listen. Ask to hear what messages your intuition has and be quiet and still and listen to them. Also, uh, you can use things like card sets. Uh, cards where you draw a card and it's got an inspirational stain or a question on it or maybe even a picture on it and just see what's coming up for you based on those words or that picture. Another way to, to build your intuitive skills. Uh, also is uh, to use a pendulum. Uh, you can research that online, but it's basically holding something where it allows you to gain guidance and information from somewhere beyond you. A pendulum is a great way for doing that. And also muscle testing, that uh, various techniques of, of checking into your physical nature, because many times information is flowing through you, both through the pendulum and, and through muscle testing, that in my mind is coming from the same source that your intuition is guiding you as well. So, first technique for being yourself is grow that expansive nature of using your intuition to know truly what your heart's desire is for this life. 
The second way I'm suggesting for you to be yourself is to find what your life purpose is, to find what your passion is, to find what your calling is. Now, I've done a number of videos on this particular topic. There's a couple of them whose uh, titles are going by on the screen right now. Uh, you can check those out. Uh, and also my book, Be Yourself, uh, can assist in that. But the idea is to find life patterns out in your physical life that are giving you reminders about what your life is, is uh, guiding you towards. Also listening to your intuition, so melding that inner wisdom and that outer messages that you're getting and, and bringing those together uh, allows you to see that your life has always been telling you about what your purpose is, if you will be open to it. So that's the second technique. The third way to be yourself is to let go of any fears of being yourself. I am telling you right now, be brave. Whatever it means to be brave in your life right now, do it. Set an intention to be brave. Use your affirmations, your prayers, your daily spiritual techniques I've been mentioning, and bring that bravery into your life. You know, because there's something you're called to do, but there's something that you feel like is holding you back from doing that. And what is it? It's some sort of fear. Fear about what others are going to think. Fear that you're going to fail at it. Fear of whatever. And I am going to tell you, let go of those fears now. Step into your bravery and put yourself out there and do it. Ask yourself, what's the worst that could happen? In most cases, the worst that can happen is not that damn bad. We just imagine these horrible things that go on in, in, in with failure, which uh, don't occur. They just don't occur. So try. Put yourself out there. Fake it until you make it. There's been plenty of times when I wanted to, uh, was doing something and I wasn't sure that I had the ability to do it. I stepped into it fully and I pretended that I could do it. And through that pretending that I could do it, I developed the skills and I developed the confidence that I truly could. So fake it till you make it. We all hear that, but there's great truth in that. The next way to be yourself is to let go of your comparisons with others. So many damn times we say, how can I do this when I compare myself to that person they're doing so much better? How can I write this book when I won't sell as many copies or have as good a book as this person over here? How can I be a public speaker when they are so good at it? How can I do these YouTube videos and they're getting thousands of, of likes and clicks and subscribers and I'm not, etc. Stop the damn comparison right now because that comparison is only going to limit you from being yourself. Related to that is the sense of stop feeling like you've got to do it like those other people. Too many times I've seen people, and I've been guilty of it myself, where I saw somebody that was successful and yes, I could learn from what they're doing. I could take techniques from them that I think are useful and that I can employ into my life. But don't mirror what they're doing. Don't duplicate it to a matter that I got to do it exactly like they're doing it. You got to put your own spin and your own uniqueness into it. Yes, borrow concepts and ideas from other people. Use them to in, in your own way, but make it your own. The fifth way to be yourself is to develop a support network. You know, there's going to be so many people out there who, when you're trying to change, they're going to say, hey, who are you to do that? And they're going to be the naysayers and the ones who are not going to support you in it. And that's going to hold you back. And in fact, those their good opinions and you're listening to them, which you shouldn't be, um, is going to keep you from fully being yourself. I'm encouraging you right now, surround yourself with people who tell you you can do it, who are encouraging you to be yourself, who are telling you to get out of your comfort zone and make those changes that will allow you to live the life most fully. Develop that network around you. Look for people who support you in what you're doing and spend more time around them and less around those who say that you can't do it. The sixth thing I'm going to tell you about being yourself is to embrace change. A lot of times we're fearful of change. We're so stuck in our comfort zones and it's so nice here and warm and comfy and there's this unknown out there that is scary and different and I'm telling you right now let go of the fear of that and embrace it embrace that change look for where change in your life is going to support you being yourself whatever that calling is in you that you're called to be in your own unique way do it do it and embrace the change that's, that's allowing you to do it. Break it down into small pieces if need be, but every day have some change that is working you towards being who you are meant to be in this lifetime.
Finally, the seventh thing I want to say about being yourself is to allow it to bring joy into your life. You know, this human experience that we spiritual beings are moving through is a true gift. You have been given the gift of this lifetime right now, and how are you spending it? Are you bringing more joy into your life each day? You know, when you're living your life on purpose, when you are living your life calling, when you are truly being yourself in all of your interactions every day, it brings so much joy to your life. What you need to do is simply look at your life with a sense of joy. Bring joy to your life now and use it as a touchstone and as a stepping stone into bringing you into being yourself. So there you have it. Seven ways to be yourself. What ways are you using that you've discovered? Drop me a comment below and let me know. And if you've got topics for other videos, see my email address right now. Send me an email and let me know, and I'll be doing a video on it in the very near future. Thanks. Until next time. Hey, one more quick thing. I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel. The link is down there on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Also, there's a related video you might want to watch. It's right next to my face. And if you like this video, be sure to click like and leave me a comment on YouTube. Thanks.